What we are going to talk about is what is HBase. What exactly is HBase? HBase is a distributed, scalable big data store. It's basically nothing but if you saw, it was a sorted map. The keys are sorted and then the values are there. It's open source. It's sparse. When you say sparse, that means you don't, they don't store nulls and it's perfectly fine to have a null value and it's not expensive because nulls are not stored at all. It's multidimensional. Runs on top of HDFS and it's modeled after Google's big table. Okay. So we saw yesterday uh, there is model after big table. So at HBase, at, at its core, HBase is nothing but a map, a key and value pair where value can be massive, no need to have structure, all you need to know is the column families. It's sorted because keys are sorted. So we saw keys are sorted and it's distributed. That's, that's the biggest advantage of uh, having HBase because it's completely distributed. Okay. Sparse. It's sparse because, I mean, you know, the, the beauty of this is a given row can have any number of columns. Not all columns must have values. Nulls are not stored, and it's absolutely perfect. Okay, and multi-dimensional because all the data you put, the data is basically stored in versions. By default, three versions are stored. By default, three versions are stored. Okay, now let's look at uh, the difference between uh, you know HDFS and a traditional uh, RDBMS, and this will make it uh, very clear as to what's the difference. Yeah. Okay. So, if you see uh, the data layout uh, in HD in, in RDBMS, typically it's column or uh, row oriented. In HBS, it is column family oriented. So we saw what is a column family. Transactions are supported in RDBMS. In HBase, actually there are no transactions. There is the transaction can be done only on a single query level. Okay. So in single query, what you do, you can verify whether it failed or succeeded, but you can't have an entire transaction block whether everything goes good or bad. There should be. That's not possible. Query language, here you use SQL. And uh, in HBase, you typically use get put scan. We'll be seeing all the functions. Security, you use authentication, authorization, typically all username, password stuff. Here you use Kerberos. Indexes, yes, indexes are there. Here you can build indexes only on the row key. The max data size that an RDBMS can handle is terabytes and what HBase can handle is petabyte plus. So when you have data in terabytes and you know you're looking at thousand queries per second, RDBMS is a better choice. But when you have data petabyte scale, RDBMS won't even cater to that requirement. And uh, the read-write throughput is millions of queries per second. So that is how HDF, HBase is different than uh, typical RDBMS. What single row means? So you say put X, Y, Z in table. Kerberos is a way of uh, securing your uh, system. It's a security thing. Yeah. Put X, Y, Z in table. Now, in transaction, in transactions, you can have, let's say, five queries, and you can commit and roll back, right? In HBase, you cannot do it. HBase, you can only do it on one query. And then you will have to catch hold of that. Okay? HBase, you can't have a transactional block where you say that, okay, if these five things work, only then commit, otherwise don't commit. It's everything on a single query level. Got it? And Kerberos is a way to secure uh, the system. That's it. And HBase security, or if you see, HBase security is similar to, let's say, Hadoop security, which is Kerberos. Okay, and uh, what do you call uh, that's not part of this course. Okay, no, no, I'm not saying it's select only. What I'm trying to say, Murli, is 
you can commit or roll back only on one row okay the point is yeah exactly so you can commit or do whatever you want only on one row yeah. you have to go to disk every time uh, oh yes you will have to go to disk every time yes Yes, you'll have to go to disk every time. No, it's not in memory. No, no, no. There's no in memory concept right now. Right now what you really have is yes, there is caching available for retrieval. Yeah, Puneet will be talking about that. That's part of it, right? Okay. So let's talk about what exactly is the relationship between HDFS and HBase? Okay, so Hadoop provides fault tolerance. We all know that. We don't have to even talk about it. It provides scalability. We saw that, and it provides batch processing with MapReduce. So we all have done a course on Hadoop. So we know that. Now, what does HBase provide? HBase provides you random reads and writes, high throughput and caching for the retrieval okay so these are two different systems but they both work on the same file system okay yes so we've seen HBase is a sorted map okay it's multi-dimensional how it is different now let's talk about the usage scenario of uh, HBase Sorry, I guess I ended up showing you something else. But basically, it's the same presentation, but uh, it was for uh, a different course, basically. My mistake. Okay. And HBase is not a traditional database. This is why it is not a traditional database. Okay. Now, let's get to the usage scenarios of HBase. So, where exactly is HBase used? Okay. When, when should you be using HBase? then you have lots of data. So if you have, let's say, what do you call, a uh, few gigs of data, don't consider HBase. It is an overhead. Please don't consider it. High write, through, write throughput, so thousands of queries per second uh, is, is, is what it is capable of. Why? Because it's a file system. It's, it's not having referential integrity foreign keys. So scalable cache capacity. For retrieval, there is a, a good, um, good cache and, you know, you can basically have uh, a good caching uh, implementation in there and data layout now excel set key lookup no penalty for sparse columns if your data is structured around keys if it's around row keys then hbase is a real winner let's look at how do i really access uh, hbase from uh, my rd or basically my map reduce now if you see yesterday we already discussed that hadoop cluster and hbase cluster have to be different so how would you basically access HBase cluster from your MapReduce? Now rows from an HBase table can be used and input to MapReduce job. Each row is treated as a single record and MapReduce jobs can search, sort, index, query the data in bulk. Okay. Few use cases of uh, HBase. So HBase uh, is used in really massive uh, you know, internet scale applications. One of them is uh, word lingo now word lingo has 44 servers okay it has 44 servers and it has two separate hadoop and hbase clusters as we saw yesterday with 22 nodes each hadoop is primarily used to run hbase and mapreduce jobs scanning over hbase tables okay so you have all your data in hbase and you are basically processing them and then hbase is in production in facebook stumble upon trend micro ning and many more so a lot of companies are using HBase. So, when should I use HBase and when should I not use HBase? If you need random write, read or both, okay, HBase is great. You need to do thousands of operations per second on a multiple terabyte of data. Your access patterns are well known and simple. Preferably, if everything is getting played around your key, then it's a fantastic database. 
don't use HBase if you only append your data set and tend to read the entire thing. Okay, so if you just uh, you know you're appending the data and you don't have too many random queries or too many queries and you tend to read the entire data then in fact uh, uh, you know it's, it's it's base is not the choice to be your primary uh, goal is to do ad hoc analysis now if you're just a bi guy who just writes any query without any pattern and can just ask any question to the database without a specific pattern again it's base is not a great idea for you HBase works fantastic when most of your queries are based on the keys. Okay, so if you are just randomly anything that comes in your mind and you don't want to go by a key but go by let's say some other value inside the column, HBase is not the best place to be. Okay, and your data easily fits in one beefy node. If one server is enough for you, if one server is enough for you, don't even think of HBase. It's a it's not a wise investment. Go for HBase only when you really have that amount of data. Alright? So that is HBase.